Hi my loves and welcome to day 8 of our 12 days of yoga challenge. So today, day 8, we're going to be working with Ashtavakrasana, which essentially means 8 limb pose or dedicated to the sage Ashtavaka. We'll start lying down and what will be really handy as always is a couple of blocks in case you need for later on. We'll certainly need one block or prop for the beginning of our practice too. Take a little moment, settle yourself down on your mat, close the eyes, and come to a state of presence and awareness for your practice ahead. Ashtavakrasana, eight limb pose, or crazy eights as it is also known as, is another arm balance that we're challenging our practice with today. So going back into the upper body, really working to build and hone in a sense of strength in the upper body. Working a deep twist within the belly that often goes quite um, unnoticed or we give less focus to in this pose. We're working quite deeply around the outer line of the body. So we'll play into this as we get going into our flow with a few twists Trying to lengthen out through the outer line of body and thighs. As always, our arm balances are a great place in our practice to build the sense of, of fun, of playtime within our practice. So encompassing that today. As you settle on your mat, maybe building an intention that forms that sense of playtime. In this moment here, in silence, in stillness, gather that intention to mind. Breathe it in. Exhale it out. When we're ready to begin, everyone, let's draw the knees together. Give yourself a little hug, a little squeeze as you ease in. Lengthen the left leg long on your mat. Begin to pivot and twist to the left hand side. Extending right leg long to the left side of your mat. So this might be where you use a strap or a jumper or a resistance band, whatever you might have, wrapping around the right sole of foot. Another option might be to prop the leg on top of one of your block here, just to get a gentle stretch to the outer line of the thigh and the glutes. If it feels comfortable without props, totally fine. Maybe you're reaching the left hand Find around the right foot. Set the right shoulder down to mat so we can really focus and hone in on the deep, juicy twist that you're experiencing here in the tummy as well. Maybe slightly teasing right hip back a touch. You notice what feedback that you get from the outer line of the glutes. I certainly feel this around, around the back of the hip. Let's take five deep breaths here. Close the eyes once again or hold in for Kikoshi your gaze at the tip of the nose. When you're ready to move, roll onto the back. Hug the knees into the chest for a moment and we begin to rock up to our Navasana. So one or two rocks to get you there into your bow pose. Hug the knees to the chest, pause for a moment, reach on back and grab one of your blocks and bring it in between the thighs. So with our Ashtra Prasana, part of it is like working the legs like a clamp, drawing in and, and suctioning the inner legs towards the arm to keep you uh, balanced and in shape in your pose. So let's experience that a little here, taking your block, your book, whatever prop you have, and just give it a good old squeeze in between the thighs. Feel the pelvic floor engage, lift to the base of the tailbone. And feel a little suction of the tummy as well towards the back of the ribs. A couple more squeezes if you feel like lightening of those legs. Ooh, you can do that extra challenge. Lovely. Removing blocks, slowly uncurl down towards your mat, lengthening the legs out in front of you. Stay rather high up onto the shoulder blades here as you unfurl back and draw the right knee in towards the chest, or in fact, right knee in line with left hip, hands to back of skull. 
and take, let's go for four bicycle crunches to each side. One, two, three, and four. Come back to your low boat, your upside down plank, and then release. Let's take it straight to the other side. No overgo on your mat here. And this time we're going to the left side. So left leg reaching long. Again, maybe taking one of your blocks, supporting underneath the, the ankle perhaps. Maybe you've got the bind of the big toe. Don't worry about the depth of this pose per se. Like if you're struggling to reach that foot, uh, really we want to keep a sense of breadth and freedom across the chest. And in that way, then creating perhaps a deeper twist in the tummy. So allow the twist here and what's going on. Again, what feedback you're getting in the outer line of the leg to be more important rather than reaching for a bind. your five breaths we're coming back to center taking that little rock up to your navasana your boat once again take your block bring in between the inner thighs squeeze 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 lovely everyone release your block slowly uncurling down to your mat extending legs long in front of you this time it'll be the left leg that bends, hands behind the back of the skull. Go for your four little crunches. One, two, three, and four. Well done, hug the knees to chest. Let's rock up to your seats, cross the ankles over, roll forward and straighten to your down dog today. Three breaths here to move to explore how down dog feels. So maybe that's a little pulse of the heart, the toes. Pressing down through the heels or a little down through the hips, side to side. Hmm. You might notice in Ashtavakrasana, the angle of the arm is super important, guys. Creating that even steady shell with the upper arms. And that's, that we can really focus. We can hone in on that time and time again with our vinyasa. Creating that steady shelf in which to to hold and support the weight of the body let's try that out chin to chest roll forward high plank pose bring the knees down to ground long diagonal like the knees to crown of head collar down press back up inhale with your breath exhale think of leaving with the heart shoulders moving beyond the wrist hover down press back up one more time hover down Press back up, inhale, exhale, hover down, chest and belly to floor, cobra pose, inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, slide back, child pose, and into your down dog, three breaths. Inhale, one, exhale, one, two, fire up that breath, two, three, and three, chin to chest, roll forward, high plank pose, knees to ground, hover down, slow, slow, steady, press back up, really working into the upper body today, guys, well done, exhale, hover down, press back up, this time, hover down on your third round, pause, hold for five, shoulders align with the elbows if we can, if we're dipping real low, we might stress a little bit more into the front of the shoulders. Hold hover three, two, and one. Cobra or upward dog. Exhale, downward dog to over the feet. Three breaths to settle. Three breaths to connect the breath, to connect the intention. Two, three. We'll build on that, but this time moving forward. Step, pop, or float your way to the top, halfway lift. Fold, exhale. Let's take it to chair pose, Utkatasana, inhale. 
Fold down, exhale, deep the nasana. Halfway there, the lengthen. Hands to ground, step back, plank pose, hold it there. Hover down, maybe knees stay lifted. Press back up. This time, hover down, stay. Stay five. Stay four, I know it's tough. Stay three, wrapping those elbows in. Stay two. And one, inhale, upward dog. Down dog, exhale, right leg is forward. Warrior one, grab the heel first of all, might help you find balance if you lift on up. Frame right foot on the way down, step it back, hover. Hold three, hold two, one, push back up, high plank pose, hold three, hold two, hold one, come back down, hold three, and switch on two, and one, inhale, brilliant stuff. Exhale, down dog, left leg forward. Inhale, high lunge or warrior one. Frame left foot, step it back, hover. Just three counts, guys. Don't want to knock you out too much before we come into that Ashtabhukasana. Down dog, brilliant stuff. Take a deep breaths, and then we'll continue to flow. Lovely, look forward, step, hop, or float to the top of your mat, settle the feet. Halfway lift, fold, exhale, chair pose with the katana. Let's hold it here, three breaths. As the gaze lifts the sky, feel the heart lift too. In Ashtabhukrasana, as much as you are leaning forward and drawing down to mat, there is a sense of, of lift, of, of length through the, the chest, keeping you upright, and keeping you probably feeling less, less heavy. Let's bring the hands to heart center here, Padabhita Utkatasana, you're twisting to the right first of all. Upper arm or forearm connecting to the outer edge of the thigh, twisting deep in the tummy. Three breaths, we've got long holds today. Ashtabhakrasana tends to be a static pose, and so building up that stamina, building up that awareness, Third breath. Look down to your mat. See if you can transfer the weight onto the right foot. Heel, left heel might squeeze to bend there. We test our balance out. As you begin to lengthen left leg like back, keep arm anchored against thigh. Reach the crown of head forward. A little challenge, a little balance for you. Keep your twist as much as you can. Keep broad, keep open to the chest. Set the left foot to the floor. Open up, warrior two. Reverse warrior, inhale. Utsita Chukhanasana, triangle, stretch right leg, left hand to sky, three breaths. Solid and steady through the feet. Drawing shoulders together, lift through heart, lift through chest. Inhaling three. Exhaling three. How to read the Chukhanasana, triangle pose, revolve triangle. Ground the feet, left hand to mat, to, to calf or to thigh as you twist. Find the twist of the upper back. Roll the shoulders down the spine, leading the crown of head away from the hip line. One more breath. Taking it into a balance here as you bend right leg. A block might be underneath the left hand. Stay in your rotation. Left leg floating away from that. It's a happy dance between the lift of left leg and the spiral to the upper body. One more breath here. Settling down, left foot to mat, release your block, left hand to floor. Rotating into Vashastasana, side plank. That can be with one foot forward, testing it out as a halfway point. Or shins to mat too, totally fine. Choice is yours. Find your three breaths, whichever variation you're in. Lifting hips to sky even banana into the side body. Tummy toning, one more breath. Lovely one, both hands to mats. Come to a high plank pose, hinge the hips back, downward dog. Walk the feet in a little closer, look towards the thumbs, five bunny hops. With our bunny hops here, you keep pushing firm into mat, shoulders slide to the ears. 
Rise to pose the feet, bend the knees, but keep the tailbone pointing to the sky. On your exhale or your inhale back, whichever you prefer, lift your seat above the shoulders, settle the feet down to mat. Couple more rounds. And down. If you feel comfortable with it in those body hops, you might be hopping, hugging the knees to the side of the ribs, and setting the feet down to a last mat squat. We're building our bunny hops here in today because there's a funky little transition that takes us from our down dog. We hop hips to sky and then we wrap our legs around the arms straight into your after the grassy. Uh, we won't break that one down too much today, but it's there if you fancy practicing it. Certainly as you build these bunny hops into your bodies. Take one more. Let it bring you to the top of your mat. And settle the feet down and halfway lift. Exhale to fold. Chair pose, Uttasana. Three breaths. Hands to heart, brilliant step. Twist into left. Three breaths, Paravrita. Hearts with an asana. Again, length, space, breadth between tailbone and crown of head. Third breath. Looking down to your mat, transferring weight onto the left foot, seeing where you can keep your twist, so where can you keep the hands in line Ooh, with the hearts. With right heel to bum, hug, 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 squeeze, 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 unravel right leg back. Couple of breaths there to float, to see how it feels, to balance. And set the right foot to floor, warrior two. Reverse your warrior. All with breath, triangle pose. Tita Trikanasana will pause. Inhale for one. Exhaling one. Two. And two. Ashta, eight limb pose, super strong to the core. So maybe you're practicing floating both hands in line with the ears, maybe not. <laughs> when you're ready to release, Paravrita Trikanasana, set the back foot in a little closer, working deep into the twist. Allow that twist to be your focus today. So notice if you need to come up a little higher in order to achieve that rotation, that spiral. Relax something extra, the gaze might come to sky. Oh, that left thumb. When you're ready to move again, bending left knee, finding your float. Paravrita, Ardha Chandrasana. Oh, I always find it tricky to turn my gaze up to sky, so maybe for those that are well, first with your half moons, maybe that's where you're taking it as the challenge. When you're ready, settle down, right hand, right foot to mat, side plank, three breaths. Two. And three. Lovely, both hands down to the floor. This time, tailbone high to sky, down dog. Let's work back into those arms here, turbo dog. So perhaps, if we're new to turbo dog, you can try this out. Picking up a block in between the forearms, squeeze, 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 hug that block. Settle the palms, they might be shoulder width apart, thumbs might need to touch a little closer. If you have the block in between the forearms, you're probably not gonna manage to touch the thumbs, that's fine. Hug and squeeze that block, let your left depend on it. As you glue the elbows towards that block, slowly hovering down, pausing a couple of centimeters away from the mat. Turbo dog really firing up the backs of the arms, back body keeping us steady. <laughs> like me, the block might now actually be on the floor, I've slightly separated my arms. Come to stretch when you're ready. Separate the hands a little wider. Can be remove the block from your mat. From our downward dog, let's step, hop, or float through to your seat. Bring the feet to floor, hands behind the back. Reverse tabletop, just as a way of counterbalancing our practice so far. If it feels okay, you might begin to extend those legs and come to Parvati Nasana instead. Same thing, lifting those hips. Rolling shoulders back, shining eyes and elbows forward. One or two more breaths. 
might be a little easier with socks on, or if you're not quite on one of these sticky mats that I happen to be on, but big breath in, we're going to take Mula Bandha check. Inhale. Exhale, sweeping the hips past the hands. Take your mat with you. Round the back. Maybe finding those feet flow off the floor. For three, for two, for one. Lovely, settle down. You can do that as many times as you fancy. We're a quick practice today. And so, uh, yeah, add on where you want to, guys. Otherwise, Navasana, bow pose. Second, third round, whatever it might be. Third round, I think. Take a moment, turn the rib cage down towards the hip line. Arms extend long, more breaths. I know this is fire for the hip flexors sometimes. So see, feel, visualize what other muscles in your body are switching on and holding you steady. We'll then take a twist, just as you did in standing, finding maybe the forearm or roughly the elbow drifting towards the outside edge of the leg. Pause here in that twist. I know it's tough stuff if you need the feet can absolutely stay on the floor. From here in your balance, you're high on those sit bones. Keep the left arm underneath the right thigh. I'll give you a little wave to the camera. Hands, hands, wrists flexing, hands facing me, fingertips to sky. This is your Ashtabha Krasna shape. The next little thing, see how it feels to cross right ankle over left, squeeze and wrap the feet together. Squeeze the arms in towards one another too. Notice where this opposite arm, I look like I'm doing opposite to you guys, but my right arm today begins to wing out. See that we engage, that we wrap right elbow towards ribs to keep us steady. Now bring the right, the heels down to mat, stay in your little uh, crazy eight shape. From here, let's bring the hands down to floor. Start off with the heels on the mat if you're just testing out Ashtabhakrasana for the first time. I press down into my mat, lift my seat, hug the thighs, and then begin to draw the shoulders forward. Just like your Chaturanga, lead with the heart forward so we don't quite collapse the floor. Equally, if we are here, test out from here. The chin is on the mat, the chest is on the floor, the feet are on the floor. Big breath in, wrap the elbow in, stay in your twist. Lift your seat, see how it feels. Hold for three, hold for two, hold for one. Release, give yourself a little shake out. We'll go back into that shape from this variation and we'll break down a few more. So once again, bottom leg crossed on top of the right, wrapping left arm underneath the, the right leg. I might need a little momentum here to lift my hips away from the ground and to hold me steady. Plant the hands, plant the heels, lift up and forward. Catch your balance, then maybe with all that squeezing, all that hugging through the inner thighs, both feet begin to float from your mats. Hold three, hold two, lift your seat as high as you can. One, gazes down at the feet and settle, bounce the floor. So keep going with that guys. If you feel that you're getting somewhere with Ashtabhakrasana without any props, great stuff. Practice, 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 and it will fit into your bodies. For a little challenge with lifting the hips, the hips are a heavy part of our anatomy, and it may be that we're struggling to lift the butt off the floor. If that's the case, come to sit on your blocks. One block might be enough, maybe it's two. And I'm shimmying slightly towards the edge of the block already. Crossing the right ankle over the left, Bringing and feeding left arm underneath the thigh. Now I'm flexing the hips, coming down as low to that leg, to the legs as I can, in order to squeeze and wrap the thighs around the upper arm, hugging and squeezing. Watch that the hands are super close to blocks or to hips. That won't give us so much space in which to roll forward and carry the weight of the body. So slightly further forward with the palms. The right hand can be a little wider to, to hold and support the weight of the body still engaging, still wrapping the, the armpits in towards the ribs. Plant the hands, see that you begin to roll forward onto that block or rolling so that the outside edge of the thigh is on your block. The feet lift from floor and maybe today you're not coming off those blocks, this is just one to perhaps feel out that shape. It might be a smidge or two off those blocks and settle down. Two blocks is quite a high setting, as I've found there. So perhaps it's one block you're using and doing the same thing. Rolling onto the right hip, stretching through the legs and pausing. 
seeing where that feels and then maybe lifting off blocks and then settling bum down lifting off blocks squeeze 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 those legs and settle down amazing everyone let's touch up for the arms come to settle down bum to mat take the right hand across the chest little moment to stretch out to the back of the arm and maybe feed the right arm up to sky you can do this with the legs crossed sukhasana or butterfly just to open up to the inner thighs Get a little swing of the arms as you do the opposite arm over. Left elbow stretch into sky. And then taking the left arm across the chest. There is another way to enter into our Ashtabhakrasana. I want to show you before we go to the other side. So you can try all of these out. Whether you're seated on a block, again, to give you a little extra height away from your mat or whether you're choosing to sit solely on the ground. I'll choose block today. We're extending the legs, working the right leg into the chest. Perfect place to pause, to hold, just to see how that feels before lifting right shin parallel to the mat, holding onto sole of foot, take a little rock forward and back, forward and back. If this all feels good, you're going to then wear your right leg like a handbag or a backpack. Swinging the right leg up and over the right shoulder. So this just gives us a little bit more kind of meatiness to the pose, a little bit more hold and grip through those legs. Plant the hands down, just like your Mula Bandha check. See if you can lift your seat from block or floor. Left heel to mat or left heel lifting. If it's lifting, you're crossing ankle over the right and begin to hinge, lean forward as the feet move to left, to right of your mat. Watch the shoulders don't dip down too much. If we end up in a pile, that's okay. Use the feet against your mat, lift your seat, lift the feet, squeeze the thighs, three, two, and one. Lovely stuff, everyone, relax. Swing the legs to the front of your mat. There's some funky transitions that we can work with in our Ashtra class now. But today, we're just breaking down the pose, getting into our bodies. Navasana, cross ankles, Jump or step back, you have a vinyasa to take, or straight to down dog. Big breath in through the nose. Massive exhale all the way out to the mouth. Blubber those lips if you need. If you're looking forward, top of mat. Step, hop, or float to your seat, and you're back in your navasana. You can take the block in between the thighs, just to give us that reminder to hug and squeeze legs in together. Couple of deep breaths, catch that breath, you'll need it. And legs and arms may point to the sky as well. In time, you're moving into that twist, upper arm or forearm against the leg, or maybe you're floating without that aid. Lovely, we fed the right arm through first of all. See where you can push the heel of the hand away, away, away from the body. And already you're getting the legs quite high on the upper arms. As I hold the shape, watch that I'm not collapsing into the back so much, but rather sitting up tall, again, leading with the heart and wrapping left elbow in with energy. A couple of breaths to stay here. This may be where you're at, great stuff. Otherwise, leaning up and forward, press the heels into mats, lift your seat, and lean forward. I'm going to headbutt the wall if I don't change the shape of my head there. Seeing how high again, you can lift those hips away from that so we're not sinking too far down to the floor. Lift, lift, lift. Engage, engage, engage. Whew, great stuff. Settle down. You've got another couple of tries in your own time with that. Know that if we're getting tired, guys, it's totally fine to work with one or the other. So you might start with rooting down through the feet in order to practice lifting the legs. Again, arms clamping to the upper arm, leaning up and forward, hips lift. If the hips feel rather heavy, you might be teasing into that forward flexion, being mindful again of what's going on with this left arm. And as much as we're not maybe in the truest shape there, we'll still visualize, still hug those thighs in towards the, the arm giving us a, a little sense of what it's like to lift the legs from the floor. It's a strong variation on those obliques there, guys, so you can equally work in with that too. 
Once again, you might be working with blocks under the, the hips, rolling onto the left block, sorry, rolling onto the left hip in order to kind of roll off your blocks in time. Left leg or length, left ankle crossing on top of the, the right, hands to mat. Again, rolling so that the, the left outer edge of the hip is on your block. And we begin to lean, tease forward. It might be, again, this is just to feel out the shape, what it's like to hover in space. Or you might be lifting a couple of centimetres from the ground. Hold three, two, and one. Settle down. Amazing, everyone. For our last go at this, it's like we're wearing our backpack bag. So right leg long, left into chest. A few breaths here, finding breath. Steadying, settling. When ready, picking up left foot. Couple of rocks, forward and back, forward and back. If this feels grand, backpacking left leg on top of the left shoulder. Might be again a little closer down the length of the arm, it feels better. Just let your middle band check, inhale. Exhale, slightly forward, lift your seat lift right foot. We can hold hover here or crossing right ankle over left. This is a great point to hold to pause if weighing forward loads the shoulders too much. Otherwise as elbows bend backwards extend feet to left of your mats. I'll remind you guys I'm not working in opposition today so this may look like the opposite side. See where we can from hips sinking down to the floor. Lift, lift, lift. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Brilliant, everyone. Settle bum down to the floor. Pause, take a few more rounds and reps of that if you're working into it. Otherwise, with me, let's come to Baddha Konasana. Couple circles of the arms here, big, big circles, and you can support the back of the legs with your blocks. Just mobilizing the shoulders after quite an intense hold. Remember, with our Ashtabha Prasana, we're Tending to hold solid in that shape for a while. Sometimes you might use it as a transition. Interlace fingers together, pull the hands away from the back. Take a little bow forward. Lovely everyone, slide the right leg to back of mat, open up into your splits, your wide leg split. Big breath in through the nose, big stretch up and over to the left foot, side stretch. If it feels nice, cradle the back of the skull, see about opening, shining the heart to sky, even in that spiral, you might reach towards the upper corner of your wall too. And let the head hang heavy to stretch out across the front of the chest. When ready, coming all the way up to your seat, same thing to the opposite side. Coming back to center. Let's take a bow forward. Hands, forearms, chest to floor. Choice is yours as you hold a wide leg split, stretching out the inner thighs after all that activation. It is said that the sage Astavaka was named so because his father put a curse on him in his mother's womb. Having ridiculed or laughed at his father for reciting the Vedic scriptures and sacred texts incorrectly.
the curse made Ashtavakra crooked in eight places. When he was old enough, Ashtavakra, though physically challenged, was wise beyond his years. He took on the long and arduous journey of rescuing his father. He was imprisoned after losing a philosophical debate. The king of the land, King Janaka, was so impressed by Ashtavakra's want to avenge his father and this clear inner wisdom that he had chose to make Ashtavakra his guru. Ashtavakra's father, so impressed and grateful for what his son had done, lifted the curse from him so that he could be free and able. A lesson we can perhaps draw from this story from Ashtavakrasana itself is that no matter what difficulties are put in front of us, no matter how we might be challenged, there is a way to overcome. Like the sage Astravakra, we all have an inner knowledge, an inner wisdom that helps guide us. We all are our own teachers. Slowly roll up to the, the back. Take your time here, guys, if you've been there for a while. Let's, let's draw the legs together. Slow roll down onto the back. We'll take you into your Shavasana already if you're ready. If there is, of course, any other moves that you feel you need to make, take the time to do so. When you're ready to come to stillness, enjoy that moment just to simply be. Thank you so much for joining me again, yogis, for day eight. I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you again soon. Bye.